this episode of Eric and Intel Investigates. Eric and the legendary Tom Carey are on the trail of a cryptid known as Dogman. Eyewitness reports and the many terrifying descriptions of this beast make this one of the most dangerous investigations the team has ever worked on. An anonymous witness steps forward with a UFO sighting along with the Dogman. What will the team encounter on this episode of Eric Mintel Investigates, The Bryn Athen Beast. My name is Eric Mintel. By night, I'm a professional jazz musician. But by even later at night, I investigate the paranormal. I, along with my team at Eric Mintel Investigates, travel the country investigating all things paranormal. This is Eric Mintel Investigates. Eric meets with retired Air Force veteran and Roswell UFO crash expert Tom Carey. Tom's other area of expertise is anthropology, which he's now using to decipher clues and eyewitness reports of the Montgomery County monster. So Tom, where are we heading? We're meeting a uh, fellow uh, a few weeks ago directed me to where the vortex for the creature, the dog man, uh, is said to come and go. That's the one that we went and investigated without this witness a few weeks ago. Yes. Tom, I noticed something right away in this vortex. No wind. <laughs> Look, you know, we get it. He doesn't want to use his name and he doesn't want his face to be shown. Yeah. But at least he's going to be on camera showing us yes. what's going on and what his experience was. Exactly. And I believe his sister too had a uh, had a similar. She had a sighting herself with a group of others, uh, but she does not want to uh, be on camera herself. So what I get out of these reports is, I mean, these people are seeing something, and it's and it's shaking them to their foundation. Yes. You know, and then they initially say, "Yeah, I want to be talk. I want to talk about this." Then. Uh, all of a sudden they think about it but wait a minute i don't want to talk about it you know exactly and i you know i think there's that stigmata of ridicule still out exactly. there exactly but i'll tell you what though even like 10 years ago tom we wouldn't have even been talking about this kind of stuff yes but so, now it's like it's become like commonplace <laughs> I really appreciate you meeting with us today. And uh, look, we respect your privacy and, and we, we realize this. So, but again, thank you. You know, this is a story that has been going on for a long time. And you were witness to a lot of these paranormal uh, occurrences in this particular area. Are we calling this a vortex? Yeah, I've uh, considered it to be a vortex uh, for a few years now. The paranormal activity that you witnessed yourself here, uh, did it occur at night mostly, or was it mixed between daytime and nighttime? I would yeah, definitely say like dusk or later is when I would always have those experiences. What about the plane? Now the plane you saw, it, it was kind of like stuck. You saw the light stuck yeah, in the yeah, sky? Mul yeah, with two different friends, multiple years apart. Uh, the, the second friend actually told the story to, and then like three days later, we we're out in this exact spot. And I said, hey, look, it's one of those like as a joke, and it just was stuck there for over two, three minutes. Wow. While we were both looking at it, and like I've talked to friends about whether it's optical illusion or not, and like a lot of planes come up this area, and this particular one that I saw, uh, the lights got stuck there. We were both saying like, move, and it, uh, spread out like the light of five points like what i sort of interpreted as like a human form wow uh, in five five points yeah like a head two arms two legs and then pulled back wow. together continued moving came over us appeared to be a regular airplane but <laughs> wow when i met with you before you mentioned a uh, ufo encounter in, over your house is that true yeah that's a a few miles from here. Uh, at first I thought it was a helicopter, but then it got like so close to my roof and just turned into like a whoop, whoop. It's like a pulsing sound? Yeah, pulsing sound. I was so freaked out that I didn't open the door. Yeah, I was about two, two, three in the morning. 
morning. I just had this a discussion about this, and I think the people like yourself could be connected to that spirit world. They're connected to the UFO world for whatever reason. And there is a, there is a thin veil that I'm finding in our research yeah. that is going on with it, where these there are certain they're presenting themselves more to more people uh, that are say maybe like-minded or. Uh, you know, they're connected somehow. We all operate on frequencies, yeah. you know, and maybe these frequencies are being picked up by people like yourself that are they're connected to it more. I don't know. That's that's part of the mystery here. Next, our anonymous witness took us to an area where he saw green orbs emanating from the forest. So this is where you saw the orb. Yeah, the orb would have been in the, deeper in, in, in these the woods. woods. There are some there's like a single trail that goes through the middle. This is actually a little bit more alive than it was last year and the year before. If you see where this dead mm -hmm. vine is, this was all dead, like all the way out wow. to here, uh, last year and the year before. Interesting. And, and, it, and it sort of seems like there's underground water that runs out in the field. And that seems to move a little bit year to year. So I also wonder if like the vortex itself sort of shifts. Yeah, sort of shifts from year to year, perhaps. So you saw the orb maybe around this area. Yeah, it would have been about uh, 50 feet in that way. And there is, there used to be a trail connecting these two fields, but it's really fall into disrepair. I don't think a lot of people go in there these days. Well, it's amazing still that there is a trail going into here, but it stops right there, which is <laughs> wild. After the stone shock realization that this could be a vortex, Tom and I headed back to the office to gather more information. the site of an incredible encounter and we're here today to talk to a great witness who's agreed to come forward and tell us a story so uh, we're going to do that right now tom and i then met with richard shaw who told us an incredible story uh tell us about it like mm -hmm. what happened in january of 1990 i was about 15 and and i know that because i called my buddy who uh the other day who we were going to his house we were on his way to his house to watch the uh, 49ers Giants game mm. it was an NFC championship game and I was with my my friend Dan and we go and sit at this uh, softball field bench on the on the first base side over there there's backlighting here you can see on the building those are those are the original old mm. floodlights at okay. the top of the building the church here yep. behind this Baptist church and they were shining down this way and from right field i saw this what i describe as a tall shadow figure now the tallest person i knew is named rick and he was six six wow and he's a big guy and i remember thinking this is taller than rick it had no, i couldn't see anything below its knees seven, seven and a half maybe. Wow. So it's walking from the right field. We're sitting on the bench, on the bench, uh, on the on the first base side. And I'm looking at this thing with the backlight. So it was shadow. And the way it walked, it glided. It didn't walk like a human where it makes, you know, bouncing. Yeah. It just like one it just, shot. It was like one, wow. it was gliding. It gets there, it gets to, to the, to the, what would be the, the infield uh, dirt. And at, in January, you would be hearing crunch, crunch, crunch. Yeah. Because we were just, and we're just staring at this thing. You know, sometimes at night, and I'm with the floodlights behind. Mm -hmm. I, I I wanted to adjust my 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 right. eyes, so I sort of uh, go like this, and I look, try to look with my peripheral. Right when I cleared my eyes, I I looked back up in my peripheral, and it was back in right field. A, a distance of like 30 feet instantaneously and then it kept doing its thing it kept walking across this way and gliding 
And when it got to second base, I wasn't taking my eyes off it. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, I, I should have heard crunch, crunch, crunch. I didn't hear anything. Silent. It was, and it, which made me just like, I said at that point, what is that? Yeah. And I didn't say, who is that? I said, what, what is, is that? Yeah. Which is strange to, to that I remember that, that saying that. But that's where the path goes down to the Bostocks and then to my, it splits off to the, in the woods to, to the left to my house. I had some cojones back then. <laughs> I slapped my buddy on the knee and I'm like, let's get it. Oh man. <laughs> we start, I start booking wow. at this thing. That's when it went from this tall, over seven foot tall shadow. I call it a shadow. Yeah. Like it's all, like a dark shadow. It went down onto all fours. Wow. And it was, and then that's when I heard, boom, and you could hear, boom, and it ran, ran into the woods line, and, and it was January. So imagine wood, sticks and yeah. leaves and crunch, 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 crunch. Like a, like a, I call it a shadow line. It looked like this big shadow line beast, like crunching, breaking sticks as wow. it goes in. And I'm running to the top of the hill, and I get to the top of the little hill, and I'm looking. I didn't see it, but I heard it. Come to crunching oh, like coming back for you. Oh, man. I have never ran so fast. I was up the top wow. of this hill. Wow. I'm in the parking lot in the light and I'm just like And you didn't you, know, you didn't see it after nothing. that. Wow. Nothing. And uh, we went to my buddy's house, uh, Glenn, and he uh, we man, I, I we, get goosebumps. Yeah, just we hearing told this, man. we told him about wow. it. He got goosebumps. He's wow. like, let's go get it. He gets dressed in his camo garb, you know. Dan, as I'm telling uh, Glenn, our friend, this, uh, we, you know, we get to his house. We don't even watch the game. We're so taken back by it. And uh, I'm telling Glenn, we're telling Glenn about this. Dan, who's never short of words, was silent. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I replayed it so many times in my in my mind. I I I. I Mm. The, those are the things that were consistent every time. So, Rich, this mm -hmm. really, I mean, it really shook you to your foundation. I mean, um, you, it, it made an impression upon you. That it made an impression. You cannot forget it. And I, so years go by where I was talking to, telling the story to the children of mutual friends of ours. The mom, who'd never heard me tell the story before, grew up at the house right next to the backstop. Oh. She said, and she's got this look on her face like, gets very sort of wide-eyed and and I'm like what's wrong and she's like uh I used to play at that softball field all the time when I was a kid I played around the backstop and I and I remember seeing from right field uh this big hairy beast running at me from right and I said what what she says yeah I re it's just a weird vague memory if I said well what do you do I don't know. I pro she's like, I probably ran away. She didn't even remember. It's just sort of huh. memory stopped. Do you think you could take us down yeah, to where you had the sighting? Let's Would go check it out. Do. Tom stayed behind while Rich showed me where his creepy cryptid encounter took place. So you're sitting here I'm and sitting it's here. coming this way. Yep. It's coming right out of the shadow. Right. That way. Yep. Towards second base. Okay. And once it got its head, because you can see that the, the shadow of right field, those things would cast a, a light. I saw its head. I saw its whole silhouette. Wow. And that's when I was like, what? And it gets, it starts walking here. It's 50 feet away. That's it, 40 feet away, second base from here. Looked more just like a tall wow. person, over seven feet tall. And it's heading that way. Is it's that heading a... towards the, that pine tree over there because that's where the path is. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Right when it gets to there. Okay. Because this is where I'm like, I said, what is that? Wow. And then it was that shortstop. And I was like, and, and Dan just was like, don't know. Huh. <laughs> and then he gets to the top of the hill there and I smack him on the way. Like, Let's go. go. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, let's just walk Crazy. over there. Yeah. Th this is the, let's just the walk part where there. I'm go This is, this still gets me. Visibly shaken, Rich showed me the exact location where this creature disappeared into. This is where that creature yep. went into. It's, uh, yes. And this, this is path. where you heard it coming back and to you And so from. we run at it. It goes on to all, that's when it turns into that shadow line wow. and starts it starts running, coming back up. Boom, boom, and I would hear crunch, crunch. And, and I'm at the top of the hill out of breath looking. And then, and then I you hear, just bolted back. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. Wow. And I just, You're like back. Oh, my yeah. God. What Rich is telling me is blowing my mind. I mean, here we are. We have a witness that has seen this creature. We're in the location that, that he's actually seen it. And there's still a path leading down to the area that he actually saw and followed this creature. So, I mean, you know, this is, this is rare when you can get a witness that's actually going to come on camera and tell you their own experiences. Tom's getting a lot of witnesses now that are seeing the same creature. There's a lot of connections here, so uh, we got a lot of work to do. Oh! <laughs>
Now, Tom's got some pictures he wanted to show you of what you maybe yep. possibly yeah. saw. What do you think of uh, yeah, what do you think Rick, of these? I, if any of these, uh, take a look at some of mm -hmm. these. If any of those resemble what you mm -hmm. might have seen. What was interesting, and I mentioned the, I, I doing wanting to understand this. I did. I would do a lot of research into Bigfoot, and I and I always thought hearing so many firsthand accounts of Bigfoot, how it it glides when it walks. It's some there's the especially in Pennsylvania, Western PA, the interdimensional piece. Yes, yeah. I got news for you. There's an interdimensional thing going on in Elkhorn too. Same thing. Yeah. And one of the witnesses said what he saw was like gliding. It mm -hmm. was that that fast. Yeah. It was so fast. And it's seven feet tall, and it's very fast, and I was just like, oh my God, I think I might have seen the Bray Road Beast. It wasn't as muscular as it this guy, right. but it was tall and skinny. I mean, it was more human-like, meaning that the height was wow. human. After thanking Rich, we moved on to our next witness who had a more recent encounter. Tom, you've gotten a witness for us. Now, who are we meeting today? We're going to be meeting with uh, Michelle Chapin. Okay. And uh, she is an eyewitness to a, a dogman encounter. This, this whole dogman encounter has been fascinating because, number one, not only in this area, I've just come to find out, but all throughout the country, people are seeing these exactly. dogman sightings. So I can't wait to hear Michelle's story. So yes, let's exactly. let's talk to her now. All right. This is Michelle. This is Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Hi. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Thank you so much for Hi, meeting Michelle. with us. Yeah. So we understand that you had a pretty significant encounter and it was right in this particular area? Yeah, um, I was with friends, this was probably about 17 years ago, um, with friends sitting up on this hill and at the bottom towards the brush tree line, um, we saw a figure that was wow. very strange. Michelle, what time of day again was this? This was 9.30 or so at night, maybe 10 o'clock. Okay. Uh, it was the spring of 2005. And we are right now, we're on Quarry, what's called Quarry Road. And uh, so ha was this the first time that you ever encountered anything like this? It was the first and only time that I saw this. And can you kind of describe what you, what you saw? Sure, so it was probably 9.30 at night, so it was pretty dark. Um, but we saw a figure, some sort of animal type thing that was on all four legs. It looked almost bear-like, but not quite at that time. Um, it was moving very fast but its legs were moving as if it should be walking a lot slower. Oh. I was with a group of people. We were like, what is going on down there? And all at once, it was upright. It didn't stand up. It was just immediately upright. Hmm. And its limbs were very long. And then it just kind of disappeared in the trees. How long would you say the entire sighting uh, took place? Maybe 20, 30 seconds. It was not very so long. So it was really quick. It was pretty quick. Next, Tom showed Michelle some examples of the dogman. I mean, that would be the closest. Ooh, let's see. This one here. Ooh, interesting. So this is another, so we were in Elkhorn, Wisconsin recently, and we had another account of what's called the Beast of Bray Road. <laughs> Similar account of the way this creature walks, and it was like the, the strange gait was almost like it was gliding. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what our witness Rich had said, yes. that it was gliding. It Shot. was like one, wow. it was gliding. So what is that connection there? Bigfoot doesn't go down on all fours. No, no, and uh, and for what you're saying, it was on all fours, and then it stood up, and then when it stood up, what happened? It just disappeared? It or? kept walking for a few more seconds, and then it disappeared. Never had any kind of encounter since or before? Nope, never since, and I walk through here at night um, somewhat regularly and haven't seen anything. I find these dogman sightings something fascinating. Uh, my background is physical anthropology, uh, fossil hominids or fossil hu prehumans, but this has something totally in a different realm, and it's fascinating, and it's caught my attention and my interest, and uh, I'm going to see this through because uh, it's something that's real and uh, uh, something that is not imaginary. After thanking Michelle, we decided to set up for a night investigation where Rich Shao had his sighting. Bucks County Courier Times reporter J.D. Mullane, who has written about us in the past, covered us on tonight's investigation. 
What is this thing, the Brunathan Beast? It's a legend to begin with. Uh, everybody, most everybody in Brunathan has heard of it. Richard Shaw recounted his story of seeing the beast in 1990. The, the, imagine a, a male lion, just a dark shadow like that, and it just ran into the, into the, into the woods line. People are seeing something, they're experiencing something. You know, is it interdimensional? Is it here? Are we, you know, looking at something from the future? Uh, who knows? You, you know? don't think it's just the wind? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Here we are. We're in. Uh, we're in Bryn Athen here. We're on the investigation for this uh, for the Beast of Bryn Athen, or the Bryn Athen Beast, as they're calling it here. Tom carries with us Dominic Sattel. Uh, Dom, are you picking up on anything down there? Were you? You know, I walked around it before the darkness came, and yeah, I was picking up some stuff. Okay. So there are some trails down there. There's some tracks. So I'm hoping we can get something. We got uh, we got a reporter from the Bucks County Courier Times on this case with us. So this is really this has captured a lot of attention. Thanks to you, Tom, because I'll tell you what, you know, if it wasn't for you getting these witnesses coming yeah, forward, well. I mean, this is helping us out a, a lot. And I'm you latched onto this and you are not letting go. And it's well, we're going to see uh, it through. It's grabbed a hold of me. Yeah, we're going to see it through. Rich then led the team to the encounter that he had in 1990 on the baseball field behind the Baptist Church. We then stopped and took a moment to listen to the sounds of the night. Kind of once everybody gets settled here, we'll just listen and listen to listen to sounds. Upon reviewing this footage, but not at the time of the investigation, we hear what sounds like the word "whoa." Like we're hearing anything like that. Like we're hearing anything like that. And then followed by the word "hey." Now keep in mind this was not us and we did not hear this during the investigation. Next, we went to the area where Rich saw the creature. We used a magnetometer and a compass to see if there were any magnetic fluctuations. 1.31. Where's that going? It's all around here is where it was going. It just jumped up to one. It's jumping all over. In this area? Yeah. So Rich, here we are. That magnetometer is going off the charts in yeah. that area, and this is where you had your sighting. So how are you feeling about this whole? I know you're. Once I saw it moving, I was my eyes were going over yeah, the right yeah. field, and I just kept looking over here. I'm still looking over here. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm expecting something. Even though the magnetometer was going off the charts, the creature didn't make its appearance. <laughs> Next, we decided to go up to the Quarry Road location where we met Michelle Chape in the day before. We then met up with Dominic, who was at the same location where Michelle had her sighting. Dom, are you feeling anything out here? Uh, haven't tuned in yet, but I'm gonna take a walk out in the field. I've got the EMF. I'm gonna see if we get some readings out there. All right, let's do it. All right. If you wanna see more of me and Dom on our crazy adventures here, check us out on Facebook at Eric Mintel Investigates, and also YouTube. Mash the button, ring the bell, and like us, subscribe, and make sure you catch out our other videos. Back at Quarry Road, we scanned the field where Michelle had her sighting for any eye shine. Tom Carey then recounted another story he received days before from another witness about this creature. Uh, another group of students were coming this way, and, and not coming that way, they were coming this way, and they saw a quadrupedal dog-like creature just sort of going you know, erratically out in the field there. And they go, what is that? It was slowly making its way towards them. And it, it would be like, not continuous, but jumping like different snapshots. And uh, when it finally got to them, it stood up on its hind legs, became a bipedal creature, seven to eight feet tall, and just glided off just like as Richard Chow had described, glided off along the bush line and uh, into the woods. As Dominic stepped into the field where Michelle had her sighting, the magnetometer once again went off the charts. I knew there were that re reader when we were coming here, I knew that would go crazy in this area. It was getting late, the creature didn't show, so we decided to wrap up the investigation, but we leave with more questions than answers. 
So, well, guys, you know what? Even though it was a bust, we didn't really see the dog, man. We didn't encounter it. But it was, I think it was good to at least be here on site. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Rich, it was such a pleasure to have you and your story and have you here, out here on site. And, you know, I mean, this is why we do these stories. Just because we want it, we want those stories to be told. And uh, maybe there's somebody that would come forward and, uh, and maybe they had their own encounter and they'll reach out to us again. Yep. But Tom, as always, man, thank you so much oh, for all, all your research, this man. This took me by surprise. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, Tom. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will be uh, having more information from this uh, investigation, I'm sure, to come. So uh, let's get out of here, guys. All right. All right. All right. All right. This case is far from over. Is this creature a physical being? Can it morph in and out of our reality? One thing is certain, people are seeing something. They're seeing the beast of Bryn Athen.